My name is Colby Beam. I went to Joplin, Missouri, Tanzania, Africa, and then Nepal. So with mission trips, I've always, well, at least before I went to Sunnydale, heard a lot of people say they were going on mission trips and how cool it was. And there are some people who had said mission trips were, you know, fun, which they were. Hearing people say how great mission trips were that have been on them recently or before me was a huge reason why I decided on, on going on a mission trip because it was a whole new world, well, new country, but almost like a whole new world for the places we went to, where there have been in Joplin where everything was leveled in, and that was really close to home or in a foreign country. It was definitely just a different experience and that's what everyone said was the best part, was getting that different experience, but also letting it be something that really changed change your life. So that was the biggest reason why I went. Um, I wasn't truly in it, at least my first mission trip, for uh, the, I guess maybe the right reasons. At first I was like, yo, maybe I can uh, have some fun, take a break from school. I thought it was a good idea because a lot of people said, you know, you get a break. So at first I was like, yeah, this would be a great time to take a break. And so that was my first initial reason why I went. Uh, but it was crazy how it got worked because my mindset was not in the right place at that time, I just went to Sunnydale uh, halfway through my sophomore year, and I was Adventist, but I wasn't always practicing in Christianity. So I was thinking, okay, let's just take a break and go on these mission trips and see what happens. And so why I went, it has changed my life. It definitely changed my mindset completely after I went and seeing uh, the different types of people that I've met, even while I was in Joplin. Uh, people were very different just because they had been through such a disaster. It always changes your perspective, and I can definitely see that now. So, and also with the foreign mission trips, the people, because they're a different country, are so different, and it really just took my head for a, a 180 spin to recognize, man, why am I really here and what made me want to, really want to go? And it, it was a blessing just to be able to recognize, you know what, this isn't just for a break. This isn't just, you know, to have some fun and take a break from school and work and homework. You know, everything was put on hold, but it was more just being able to get the chance to not only help people, but see what a difference it could make to be on a mission trip. And after being on a mission trip, it's really affected my life, you know, as in today and how I, how I live, you know, how I see things, how I want to be a servant to, or well, at least try to be a servant in any way that I can, whether I'm just walking around the block and I see someone maybe need some help. Before I went on mission trips, I was like, oh, you know, maybe they'll find someone to help them do it, but I recognize maybe I need to be that someone. So it was a huge blessing that I can recognize, you know, it's changed my life, not only why I went, but now even afterwards. One of the stories that really stuck out to me while I was on a mission trip was while I was in Africa, that was my second mission trip, first one overseas, so really just life-changing because I've never been, uh, I guess, yeah, I've never been to a different country or I've never passed over any big ocean. So uh, first mission trip overseas, so it was pretty exciting. Uh, but while I was there, we were building these, uh, what we call one-day schools, uh, but also a church, and we had built, I forget the number, I was about maybe 10 or 11, I think, and not, and I think the 11th one was the big church that we built, and it was, it was just an exciting experience to be able to, to, to build those for the school that we were staying at, because we were staying at a school, and bef before I went on the mission trip, I was just planning on building, I wasn't planning on doing anything else. Um, there was supposed to be one preacher who was supposed to go to Africa, and his, I won't give the name, but he, he had committed to doing preaching uh, while we were there. And he would have helped out with some of the, the building as well, but that was his main focus was to preach. And about a month and a half before we were about to leave, this guy, very sweet guy, um, came up to me and he was like, you know what, Colby, I really feel like you're the one who needs to be called to go preach. And then he left like that and he gave me the information. He's like, no, you need to do it. And then he left. Uh, he, he just left me there, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, awesome, because uh, I didn't want to preach at all. <laughs> I was originally just going there to uh, just to build. 
So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe this is something that maybe needs to be done. I don't know. So I just kind of went with it and I started practicing sermons. And uh, there are other people going on mission trips at that time who were going to different countries and their sole purpose was just to preach, not to build. So they were preparing sermons and I was preparing my sermons with them and you know, going over the content that we need to preach. And so right when we got in Africa, we started preaching the, well, I started preaching the sermons while I was there in the mission trip. And I was doing the building in the morning and then preparing for my sermon in the afternoon and preached at night. And did it for about two weeks. And it was really exciting. Most amazing thing that had happened to me was, I think it was about my fifth meeting. I just felt like, man, I wasn't into it. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit speak through me. Uh, the first few nights, I was nervous. I mean, and not to say I still don't get nervous when I preach, but I was in a, in a way that was so nervous that I didn't want to do it anymore. I was scared. And so we had a translator who would translate uh, for us while, well, at least for me, while I was preaching uh, to the community, uh, to the little church they had there. and. He was a great guy. His name was Paul. I still remember his name. Um, he had noticed, you know, I didn't say anything. I wasn't telling him that I was nervous. I wasn't telling him that I was scared. I, I guess it was my countenance that just showed it. Just sitting there going over my sermon that I was part of the preaching the next, you know, 20 minutes. And Paul just gets up there next to me. And I still remember playing his day. And he says, hey, Colby, Lucio Gope. And you know, for me, I had no idea what that meant because I didn't speak Swahili and that's what they were speaking. So I was like, dude, what does that mean? I was like, I was like, you know I don't speak Swahili, that's why you're here. And he was like, don't be afraid, that's what it means. And it, I felt the Holy Spirit just wash over me like, uh, like a flood after that moment. Because I was like, man, God, how did you know I needed to hear that? Uh, I, I didn't tell anyone I was scared. I didn't tell anyone I was nervous. I didn't tell anyone that I, I didn't feel worthy just to keep on preaching. I didn't tell anyone except for, for you, God. And to hear someone, my translator, say that to me, it blew me away. I mean, this is what you want me to do. This is what you want me to do, not only for now, but I, I thought to myself, maybe as a career. And so I finished the, that night on cloud nine. And then the rest of the series, I just felt the Holy Spirit speak through me. And, and it wasn't because what I had done was good, it was just, that I felt the Holy Spirit saying, Colby, this is what you need to preach on. And at the end of the series, we had like 20, 23 baptized. And seeing those people baptized was such an experience, I couldn't describe it. And to know that maybe, well, to know that I can see them in heaven because of their, ch their choice was phenomenal. So that was my biggest experience is having Paul come up to me and tell me something that I needed to hear. And it was amazing to see how God used him in a way that I could never have saw, you know, unless I went on this mission trip. And to have him say that to me at that time in my life was pretty amazing. Because now I'm in theology, I'm going to be a pastor. As before that mission trip, as I had said before, I wasn't even going to think about, uh, I, I was planning on going on a mission trip just to have fun. So that was my biggest experience because it changed my life and it put me on a new path to choose a career that now I know God has called me to do. Mission trips through Sunnydale Academy has changed not only people's lives of the countries that we go to, but the students' lives as well. I mean, me personally, I, to be honest, before mission trips, I would never have thought about giving my life to Christ or, you know, really becoming a Christian and let alone becoming a pastor. The experience is worth no amount of money. So I think that if you want to donate, please do. And if you already have, thank you because God has used you in such a mighty way. And I know when you get to heaven, you're gonna be able to see the students that you had, you had helped out or see who they had ministered to. And it'll just be a chain of events that has happened to, because of the finances you've been able to give, so many people can be reached and so many people will be able to go in the kingdom because of your finance you gave. So thank you.